Hello and welcome to this video about electromagnetism and magnetic domains. We are going to look at current and magnetic field, the right hand rule, what an electromagnet is, and magnetic domains. In this picture, um, iron filings have been sprinkled around um, this current carrying wire and they show where the magnetic field lines are. So as we just showed in the previous picture, um, a current carrying conductor is going to produce a magnetic field and the magnetic field that is produced is going to be a circle around this current carrying wire. So if our current is going this direction, we can use our right hand, and you'll have to know your right hand from your left hand to do this, you can see this person's right hand, um, their thumb is indicating the direction of the current in the wire. Their fingers are indicating the direction of the magnetic field. So if you put your hand on a wire and put your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers are going to uh, point toward, wrap around it and point toward the direction that the magnetic field uh, lines will be going. You can use the right hand rule to find the direction of the magnetic field of a current carrying loop. Let's say we have a wire and we form a loop out of it. You can see uh, what is happening to the direction of the magnetic field. Um, pause the video and use your right hand and you can see how uh, these field, magnetic field lines accurately represent the direction of the magnetic field. A solenoid uh, is formed when uh, several loops are combined, and you can see the picture of that here. Here is our solenoid, multiple loops, and a very strong magnetic field can be generated this way. Um, inside of this solenoid, um, the magnetic field is extremely strong. Um, you can see those magnetic field lines are very close together, indicating a very strong magnetic field. The strength of the magnetic field inside of the solenoid is going to be proportional to the number of coils uh, per length of wire. And um, also, we can do something else. We can insert a rod. We could put a metal piece, a nail, if you have a nail, um, through the center of the solenoid and we can increase the magnetic field strength even more. Uh, doing that is what we call an electromagnetic magnet, inserting uh, a piece of metal inside of that solenoid. Now let's talk a little bit about what we call magnetic domains. Um, most substances, you'll notice, are not magnets. Um, most substances cannot be magnetized, and the reason is Let's, if we start to think about things on an atomic level um, and think about the electrons involved, if we have a spinning electron, that spinning electron is a moving charge and it, it, it is producing a magnetic field, that little electron. Um, when we talk about most substances, most substances have electrons um, in their atoms that are pairing up with their spins opposite each other, and so their fields cancel each other out. So most substances are not magnets. There are some substances that we call ferromagnetic materials. Iron, cobalt, and nickel would be some of those. Um, and in these materials, the magnetic fields produced by those electron spins are not completely canceling each other out. Um, in fact, there's a strong coupling between nearby atoms and it forms large groups of atoms whose net spins are aligned. Um, we call these groups of atoms domains. They can be anywhere from 10 to the negative 4 to 0.1 centimeters in size, and this is what they would look like. In ferromagnetic materials, the domains, if each one of these is, is a domain, they line up like this when they are magnetized. This would represent domains of unmagnetized material. So magnetic domains are simply microscopic magnetic regions composed of groups of atoms whose magnetic fields are aligned in a common direction, like this, not like this, right? This is unmagnetized. Um, what happens to uh, 
domain alignment in hard magnetic materials versus soft magnetic materials. Remember we had talked about that before. Um, in a hard magnetic material, uh, the domain alignment persists after the external magnetic field is removed, thus a permanent magnet. Um, in a soft magnetic material like iron, once that external field is removed, then we get this random motion of the particles again, and the orientation is not like this. What about this question? What if I cut a magnet in half? What happens to the poles? Remember, if I have a magnet, the domains look like this. They're lined up. If I cut the magnet in half, do I still have a north and south pole? Yes, of course. You can see how I could, I could cut the magnet many times, or, or as in this case. I can cut the magnet. It will still have a north pole and a south pole because of this idea of the magnetic domains. Advanced ideas. Make your own electromagnet. Try following uh, this little process and see if you can generate your own electromagnet. Um, or maybe you have some other ideas, other questions, things you'd like to explore. I look forward to seeing you in class and uh, seeing what you come up with.